Coming up on DTNS, products from AT&T's home internet to Niantic's Pokemon Go have changed how they work to adapt to changes brought on by the coronavirus. What are those changes? What effects will they have? And what other things might change how they work? This is the Daily Tech News for Friday, the 13th of March, 2020 in Los Angeles. I'm Tom Merritt. And from Studio Redwood, I'm Sarah Lane. And from Ohio, I am Rob Dunwood. Uh, and I'm the show's producer, Roger Chang. Uh, we were just talking about high school reunions. Uh, we were talking about Sarah's upside down experience of getting Airbnb <laughs> reservations instead of ca- having them canceled on her. Uh, that's all part of Good Day Internet. If you want the wider conversation, become a member at patreon.com slash DTNS. Let's start with a few tech things you should know. Microsoft has decided to make its Build Developer Conference a digital conference May 19th to the 21st. The event had been scheduled to take place in Seattle. And Apple announced its Worldwide Developers Conference, or WWDC, will be held online in June with the usual keynote and developer sessions delivered over the internet. Apple didn't announce specific dates, but CNET has a handy page keeping track of all the events being canceled because... The list is growing, or suspended, or delayed, all of them. We'll have a link to that in our show notes. Discord is easing the limit on its go-live streaming service from 10 people at a time to 50, so if you're a teacher, you can conduct classes, coworkers can collaborate, and groups can meet remotely. The latest Windows 10 Insider Preview build includes support for cross-platform copy and pasting to Samsung Galaxy Z Flip and to the S20 phones using your excuse me, using the Your Phone app. Additionally, S20 users can send and receive RCS messages on Windows 10 when using Samsung messages as their default with notifications read on Windows marked as read on the phone. And Microsoft released an emergency patch to fix a flaw in the server message block protocol. We told you about that earlier this week. Uh, That's the one that would let specially crafted packets execute code on client or server machines with a wormable attack, uh, which of course could spread quickly. The flaw was limited to SMB version 3.1.1 and only affected 32 and 64 bit Windows 10 versions 1903 and 1909. Microsoft recommends Windows 10 machines update as soon as possible. If unable to patch right away, Microsoft recommends turning off SMB compression and blocking port 445 as a mitigation. So it's good that they got that fixed. My Windows uh, rebooted on its own uh, and patched that right away, which was good. Uh, Let's talk a little bit about uh, people taking a bad advantage of a bad situation. Yeah, pretty unsurprisingly because, you know, humans. Security firms report a rise in attacks using COVID-19 as a way to trick victims into running malware. Campaigns often impersonate the World Health Organization and the U.S. Centers for Disease Control and Prevention. Security company Agari told TechCrunch it found a coronavirus-themed business email, compromise attack, designed to trick companies into paying money to a different bank than usual, due to the coronavirus outbreak. And we know most of the people in our audience uh, are are good at avoiding phishing schemes, uh, but this is a time when your patterns are broken, uh, you're right. paying attention to things uh, that, that, that are COVID-19 uh, with a little more attention and maybe a little more panic. Uh, than you might. So it's just just a public service message to to be extra aware of when you get that CDC email. Is it really from the CDC? Don't click on a link. Type in a link. All all the usual best practices apply. But but you know this this is the time when they're going to try to take advantage of you being out of your comfort zone in the way you do things. Right. The CDC would probably never email you anyway right. unless you were already corresponding with them and you know that it would be a legitimate email from them. So just be careful and watch out for that kind of stuff. I got a phone voicemail from L.A. County yesterday, and I immediately was suspicious. I was like, what is this about? It turned out it was an actual, all it said was like, you know, L.A. County is recommending social distancing, wash your hands, all the all the normal stuff that mm-hmm. we've been hearing. But I was like, wow, that is that is unusual. And that's what starts to break your patterns when you're like, oh, that would usually not happen. So you just kind of, you know, raise that awareness a little bit extra. Firefox 74 has announced its Facebook container add-on and will prompt users to install it upon updating. Users can use the container to log into Facebook without being tracked. Installing the extension closes your Facebook tabs, deletes your Facebook cookies, and logs you out of Facebook. And after, when you log back into Facebook, it keeps all cookies isolated from the rest of your browsing. That means you won't see like buttons, embed, embedded comments, or be logged in um, automatically into Facebook pages unless you choose to do so. Oh, this is so handy. If you hadn't added this on uh, before, you definitely want to take advantage of them prompting you to do it uh, because 
if yeah, honestly, and I'm not trying to kiss up, Rob. The only reason I ever go to Facebook anymore is to go to the SMR podcast page and and see what's up there. Like I I I don't want to be logged into Facebook all the time. So having the ability to say yeah, just lock that off, don't let it affect other pages is is good for me. This. When I read this, actually made me say, huh, there's a reason to use Firefox because I'm the same mm -hmm. way. I don't really use Facebook. My wife and my mother-in-law ask me all the time, did you see this on Facebook? And literally, I will have to go log into it to see it because unless I'm on the SMR Facebook group or mm -hmm. another group that I, that I fancy, I'm just not in Facebook. Um, so to me, this is almost like just making um, like incognito, incognito mode for Facebook all the time. Except yeah. for when you don't want it to be, um, which is which is kind of nice because you know I don't want to always be in um, you know private browsing, but I don't want Facebook tracking me everywhere I go across the internet. So I, I like this. It's a little bit of the best of both worlds, isn't it? Because incognito mode will just forget everything. This right. will this will remember if you want it to. If you're like, no, right. I do use Facebook to log into this particular site, so remember that, and but keep it separate from everything else. It's it, it's I, I like it. It's pretty nice. Uh, Apple began gradually reopening Apple stores across China over the last several weeks. The company confirmed that all 42 stores are now reopened in the country. Apple had begun closing stores in China in early February to help stop the spread of COVID-19. So this is this is good news. <laughs> this is good yeah. COVID-19 news. Uh, and it's, poor, it's it's easy to dismiss it as like, well, that's happening over there in China if you're not in China. Uh, but it, it's helpful in a lot of ways. It says things are starting to get back to normal in a place that was hit harder by it. Uh, and it gives you a, a, a bit of a timeline. I mean, it's going to act differently in different parts of the world for so many different reasons. But it's good to know that in the place where it originated, where they didn't know it was coming, uh, they closed stores in February and were able to open them uh, all by March 13th. I, I, I don't want to, you know, be overly optimistic about that, but I, I think that's that's important to kind of calibrate your expectations, I guess. Yeah, I mean, as stores and restaurants and businesses and gatherings and events and, you know, we're we're hearing about closures as if the world is shutting down, you know, country by country. Mm -hmm. And, you know, to have a little perspective, like, of as you said, Tom, I mean, this is where this all originated. It's where the, you know, some some concern started to grow. And sure, it, here it, where I live, where we all live in the U.S., it, totally different place. But in many ways, it was sort of like China was a few weeks ahead and we were starting to see ripple effects across the world. So one can hope that those ripple effects will also go the other way. Yeah, it's nice to see that there is another side. There, there is the other mm -hmm. side of this. And China, clearly, it was first there. So they want to be the first to get out of it. So we know that there, there are going to be better days to come for us. Yeah, a little bit of a light at the end of the tunnel, huh? Yeah, that is good. The Verge notes that supply chain analytics company Trendforce expects a drop in laptop shipments in February of 48% over last year due to labor and material shortages and restrictions on transportation. Trendforce also expects smartphone production to drop 12% this quarter. Smartphone production is expected to be affected for one, two, three months. Gardner supply chain expert Corey Jose told The Verge that even raw materials like steel, copper, and aluminum have been disrupted as well, and he doesn't think the effects will go away within one quarter. A lot of this is as a result of just-in-time production, which doesn't build up inventories that can be used during an interruption. Shortages of electronics across the boards and automobiles should be expected as well. Yeah, maybe we should have done this before the good news story. But, yeah, right. It's uh, like now, now that we've now we've built you up, let's let's get back to reality. Because uh, because this is the other side of it, which is the effects will go on even once everybody in the affected areas are back to work and and getting back to normal. Uh, it it'll take some time for the supply chain to catch up. Uh, for for materials to get back in the system, and nobody really knows exactly how long that's going to take. Yeah, this is this is especially you know, concerning is not really the word, but it's like kind of sad because right now with everybody working from home with like, you know, in Ohio where, you know, schools are closed here. This is probably something that's going to happen in other states here pretty shortly. Um, you know, people need computers, laptops, phones so they can do their remote teleworking, teleschool, telelearning, all that kind of stuff. So, um, yeah, there, there definitely is a disruption. Um, yeah. as uh, coronavirus uh, spreads around the world. Well, what's, you know, the thing to think about is that it isn't just, oh, these guys are back in the factory and they're making the parts and, you know, they're, they're coming out. Uh, that's what Tom was saying. It, it's shipping. It's getting the supply of raw materials, but it's also 
getting someone to drive the stuff over to the docks and then having a ship available that you can put the container on and then someone on the other side ready ready to pick that up and then distribute that. I mean, there are all this, I was listening to this uh, N- NPR story on, on from from a guy down in Long Beach who who runs one of the the por- uh, receiving areas, and he's going like it's a very long chain. It isn't just a simple you yeah. know, mm-hmm. three step. There's literally twelve different areas where things are are being affected currently. Yeah, I mean yeah. when you when you talk about supply chain, we all know what the what that means but you know you we have a foxconn story from yesterday right like foxconn says hey things are going pretty well we are pleasantly surprised uh, by uh, our factories kind of being up and running again and you sort of go cool okay we're everything's fine well getting all of those components to various places that they need to go somewhere else in the world by ship by air yeah once it gets to another country and a dock then who's touching it are there shortages of employees at those places? I mean, it is, it's a pretty complicated process. Yeah. It's uh, you know, I think we're all old enough to remember when stores actually used to have storerooms in the back <laughs> when, if there's yeah. something wasn't on the shelf, you could go to the back to get it. And I remember this is a few years ago asking a question, Hey, can you go check in the back? And it's like, sir, we don't have a back. <laughs> Everything. <laughs> that's, that's, a, in the store that's how they tell here. how old you are when you're one of those people goes, can you check in the back? And they're like, yeah, yeah, that doesn't exist so. anymore. <laughs> uh, yeah. I, I, keep in mind, like, if uh, if there's not enough demand for a raw material, uh, the companies that make it don't keep making it because, like you say, they're used to just-in-time inventory. They may not have anywhere to store it, so they they ramp down. And then once the demand comes back, it takes time for those raw materials to ramp back up. Also, parts makers. You know, Foxconn may be back to full capacity, but if they can't get the parts from the parts makers in other parts of China or in Korea— uh, then that does capacity won't be able to put out what it can. So, I mean, I think we did a good job of talking about all these different aspects of the supply chain from the materials to the parts, to the assembly, uh, to the shipping, you know, it's, it's, it's going to take a while for this is a fairly finely tuned ba- and balanced system. And it's, I'm not saying it's not going to come back. It's just, it's not going to all just snap back into place. It takes a little while for that engine to rev right. back up. Niantic announced it's making changes to the game mechanics of Pokemon Go to prioritize experiences that can be enjoyed in individual settings. Habitats will be increased so that trainers can see more monsters nearby while playing closer to home. Hatching eggs will require fewer steps, and Pokestops will drop gifts more frequently. Niantic already already announced the canceling of several real-world events in the game, and that the upcoming special research adventure will only include tasks that can be completed by individuals. Yeah, so this is an interesting one. Uh, he in a in a world where the recommendation uh, in a lot of places is don't go out if you don't need to. Mm-hmm. If you do go out, stay a couple meters away from each other. Uh, you know, Pokemon Go is telling you the opposite. Uh, so this this is actually responsible to say like, you know what? Let's give you some incentives to keep playing inside. If you're really into the game, uh, let's let's make it more enjoyable for you to to comply uh, with healthy behaviors. I, I think that's good. Yeah, I mean, it's like, what what would the alternative be for Niantic to say, well, just everyone's just going to stop playing the game, right? They, of course the company's not going to do that. So this is smart. Or get blamed because they didn't change anything and people or, are going outside yeah. to play Pokemon Go because they had a big event that, that was drawing them out, right? Oh, yeah. Exactly. There clearly was a lawyer who probably had mm-hmm. their hand in this and said, hey, we <laughs> cannot have people gathering together uh, over this game. That would not be a wise financial uh, decision for us to continue having people get together like that. Uh, well, we got a few other companies changing uh, their behaviors in the face of this unprecedented uh, pandemic. Uh, but before we get to that, I want to remind you to get all the tech headlines each day in about five minutes. Stay on top of all this stuff. Subscribe to dailytechheadlines.com. <clears throat> AT&T kind of stunned me yesterday, announcing it would suspend all broadband data caps in the United States. AT&T already offers some unlimited plans, but others face caps of 150 gigabytes, terabytes a month. This is the home use. Uh, this is this is for your home internet. This doesn't affect the wireless plans, at least not that I've seen. Um, but a, a pretty big change uh, and, and a pretty important one for people who are going to be working from home now. Charter is offering free spectrum broadband and Wi-Fi access for 60 days to any household that has a student, K through 12 or college, uh, that do not already have a Spectrum broadband subscription at any service level. If you already have it, they're not going to give it to you. Uh, but if you don't have it and you need it, they'll give it to you. Uh, and if you're 
uh, less than 100 megabits per second, they will give you a faster plan. Uh, Comcast is now letting qualifying low-income customers sign up for 60 days of their Internet Essentials service, that's a, a low-income program, at no cost. So if you're new to that program, you don't have to pay for it for 60 days. Uh, and Comcast is boosting broadband speeds for all Internet Essentials customers from 15 up, 2 down, to 25 up, 3 down megabits per second. Uh, my guess is they were probably getting ready to do this anyway, so this was a, a nudge to just go ahead and do it uh, because they're going to maintain those speeds going forward. Verizon announced Thursday it's spending an additional $500 million on network infrastructure investment. That's taking them from 17 to $18 billion to 17.5 to $18.5 billion. So it's not a huge percentage. Uh, but Verizon also says it has not seen a measurable rise in usage yet. So they want to get ahead of that. And finally, the US FCC chairman, Ajit Pai, introduced the Keep Americans Connected pledge, which asks telecommunications operators not to terminate service for the next 60 days, to waive late fees, and to open access to public Wi Fi hotspots to anybody who needs them. The pledge also encourages ISPs to just suspend data caps and prioritize healthcare facility connectivity. All major U.S. ISPs have signed up to the pledge. That doesn't mean they've all dropped their data caps, but they've all pledged to do all of these things. We'll see if they follow up on it. Uh, Rob, uh, this is interesting because a lot of the things that Ajit Pai is calling for were legal requirements of, under the previous Internet guidelines that were repealed not too long ago. Yeah, isn't it funny how <laughs> but doing the right thing is doing the thing that you are already doing. But uh, yeah, I, you know, I, I can say this. I like all the news uh, all the way from AT&T all the way down um, for a big reason. Like so I'm in Ohio. Schools are canceled here for the next three to four weeks. Um, and one of the things that they found here in Ohio is that um, there are a lot of lower income students who uh, don't have home Internet. So if you have to do um, home learning, but you don't have home Internet, how do you do home? learning. Um, it was actually more of an issue than making sure that they had a phone or a tablet or something that they could do the home learning on. Was it, do you actually have connectivity at your house where you can connect? So this all goes towards that because, you know, it, it would be disruptive to have students literally out of school for a month and they can't do their work because they can't get online to do it. So this goes a long way to help with that. And I think the other carriers absolutely need to, you know, um, you know, take the same stance and catch up to this because, you know, we're, we're, we're in a crisis right now and these are things that definitely will help. The charter one is a little curious to me. Now, if you are already a charter subscriber it, and you have kids in the house, charter's like, well, you just keep paying. If you don't have any internet charters, like we're going to help you out if you've got kids in the house. But what if you have another provider who's also giving you a deal? Well, wait, what do you mean? If you have another provider, this doesn't apply to you. You're not a spectrum customer then. Right. But I mean, anybody who doesn't already have a spectrum broadband subscription could be anybody that doesn't have a broadband spectrum subscription. Oh, I see what you're saying. Well, <laughs> so you have AT&T, let's say, or Verizon. Right. Uh, could you go to spectrum and say, hey, I don't have your your uh, yeah. your, your I Yeah, I guess so. Huh. And All right. They're there probably will be some people who would do that, but my gut tells me that the overwhelming majority of people will see that as a hassle that they're just not interested in. You're I'm right. going to, I'm paying mm -hmm. for internet that I have, and I don't know if you're okay with it, but you definitely have it, and I'm going to cancel that and move over to this thing that I can get for free for two months. That's probably just a hassle that's not even worth making the phone call to find out if you could do it. Well, and then have to have somebody come out to your house potentially and all that, right. you know, people are going to be less likely to want that to happen right now too. So I, I looked at this and especially if more ISPs do follow the pledge and drop the data caps temporarily, uh, I can dream that they will all realize, wow, it really, really doesn't make a difference. I know they all know it doesn't make a difference and it's just a monetization thing, but maybe they'll realize that there are better ways to monetize oh, than Tom, artificial data caps. ever the optimist. I'm just saying, you know, I'm you just know, putting it out there in the universe, Sarah. It's true. <laughs> well, or, or <laughs> I, I don't know. I, I think it's a stretch for the companies to be like, you know what, let's just be the good guys going forward, you know, well, now that not, the crisis is bad. over. But but it's, it could be more of public pressure saying like, hey, listen, this was all perfectly fine to do. You know, it, it, there is no reason to start gouging people for for very little reason, as you were doing in the past, because we've all seen how the you know the transparency kind of fell apart. Maybe there, maybe that angle. There are some links there. I see it as uh, once you get people used to something, both customers and and the companies, 
Yeah. Uh, they may realize that it's more trouble than it's worth to get rid of it. The billing department may say, you know what, we're bringing in just as much money now that the 60 days is over as we were before because people are sticking around. You know, let's let's not add the cap back. Uh, you know, that's I, I don't know. I'm just saying I don't think they'll do it out of some you know, like newfound sense of, of charitableness. Uh, but the habit building that they would never have taken a chance on on even trying this, you know, could have an effect. That's all I'm hoping for. Yeah, I think you're also seeing a lot of MBO, MVNOs are actually really starting to offer true uncapped, unlimited bandwidth. So um, it's you know it's probably in their better interest to start offering this as well to keep them on your more expensive plans. That you know, um, literally, you know, who was it? The Yahoo Mobile just came out. Right. It's yeah, uncapped yeah. and it's unlimited for forty bucks a month. That's not bad. So, um, you know, I, th I think that you are probably going to see this stick around, not because, as you said, that they think it's the best thing to do. It's just because it's like the thing we need to do to keep people paying us. I wonder what other kinds of services could get on this bandwagon could could start. I mean, obviously dropping data caps uh, or, or providing faster service. Uh, you know, we're seeing examples of both of those here uh, are examples of this providing free Wi-Fi. Uh, is listed here as uh, on the pledge. Uh, I I just wonder, you know, and and we are seeing already uh, Microsoft Teams offering higher capacity. We're seeing a lot of the video conferencing folks giving people more features. We talked about Discord upping the group live. I mean, can, I'm trying to think if there's anything else left where you might expect a company to say, you know what, we're going to also do X, Y, or Z to help. Um. They could potentially for for streamers provide like you know for the next couple of months we'll give you access to the premium stuff that you normally would have had to mm -hmm. upgrade to just for just temporarily. When you say streamers, what do you mean? I mean like the Hulu or yeah okay yeah like, streaming you know, services right. streaming sorry streaming services where it's it you, you know you, they give you something nice for two months and so like after two months and and you know whatever you're gonna get some customers out of that too yeah it's like are. oh like i'm totally addicted to it now i'm gonna go pay right. whatever the cost yeah. is right well would we see hulu give their hulu with ads available for free for 30 days to, yeah. to help yeah, people totally. out stuff like that yeah yeah and that way it's it's doing a good thing but it's also like and if you're halfway through binging that show that you ended up really liking well then once things turn around a little bit maybe you know maybe we'll keep you for a fee, but without it being mandatory for anybody. I mean, that's all, it's just, the, that's just a good look for a lot of companies. I've noticed, I mean, in, across so many industries, uh, there there's a lot of creativity that you're seeing. Uh, there was a a, uh, a restaurant in Seattle, I guess an upscale restaurant. I, I'm not familiar with it because I haven't been to the city in a while. And they said, we're shutting our restaurant down. No one's coming. We don't need fine dining right now. We're going to open up like a pop-up bagel shop, kind of like like a drive through type thing, you know, where you can get food and and have, you know, little to no contact with anybody else. And and just, just, just really creative mm -hmm. solutions for the everyday person that that really make a lot of sense instead of just shutting down or – or mm -hmm. pretending that the problem doesn't exist or complaining that it's all been so disrupted that your business model isn't working. Yeah, that actually is going to, you know, go a long way to help their workers too because mm -hmm. they still you, you can still pay them to do something. That's right. Um, you know, I know I know you know the the biggest industry is you know any service business is going to take a hit while we're having this uh, you know this pandemic. So, um, if you can do things like that that are kind of smart and intelligent and keep your people working, I'm all for it. I got one more for you. Uh, right. As as more and more movies are being delayed, Fast and Furious Nine delayed till next year. Mulan uh, delayed James for Bond. you know a certain amount. Next, yeah, No Time to Die already delayed, uh, and and just almost all the movies in the next month uh, have been put off, have been delayed. Some of sometimes till like September October. Uh, I wonder if the pressure will now be on the studios to find a way to bring in some money. In the meantime, theaters like AMC theaters is cutting their capacity. They're not going to allow any theater to have more than 250 people in it. And the smaller theaters will only be sold at 50% capacity to, to allow for that social distancing, but they don't want to close because well, they need the money, Yeah. but there's not going to be any movies to show. So this is where I think, what if they finally come to the table with the streamers or with their own streaming service, AMC has their own streaming service, or maybe with Fandango and Fandango Now and the movie theaters and say, let's get some of these movies out there into homes. 
uh, and we'll have a, it'll be a, a limited time thing. You sell it through the theaters so the theaters can still make some money out of it. Uh, and, and we maybe, I don't know, maybe we bring in uh, Amazon Prime or Uber Eats to deliver you some popcorn and stuff. But, but be able to make some money because what people want right now if they're stuck in their house is entertainment. And this is a perfect mm -hmm. opportunity for the theaters to broker that deal that says, let's actually get these movies in front of people in some cases. We definitely were wanting some entertainment. I was watching a spike ball tournament on ESPN 11 last night. What spike ball? <laughs> I'd be a facetious. The spike, <laughs> spike ball is literally like a trampoline and you take a ball and you hit it down into the <laughs> Really? It, it is, uh, it is, it is, be basically it's the hacky sack of the 90s it is yeah. they're oh. playing it all the, well not now because college campuses are closing but uh -huh. it is like intramural college campus thing it is a big thing i remember i was uh uh driving past bowling green university and they literally had a field of people playing this spike ball game wow Cork well ball if you if you're, if you're stuck at home and you can't play spike ball, you can join our Discord conversation going on 24-7. You can join by linking to a Patreon account at patreon.com slash DTNS. Let's check out the mailbag. Let's do it. George in the UK wrote in and said, wanted to give you some insight on my experience at the workplace given the current COVID-19 situation. As of writing this email, the UK government is still in containment mode and have not advised the public to restrict their movement. I work for a huge media agency. We have provisions already in place should the situation change. The company has already switched to a more flexible approach to working hours over a year ago to move with the times. We've been issued laptops and access to VPN connections already set up. Working at the ad operations department, all of our systems are web-based. Files are already saved in the cloud. So, uh, George says, I agree with Sarah's comment about how the situation could well be the dawn of a more wider acceptance of remote working in helping productivity. Here, here, George. Here, here. Yeah. Thanks for the insight, George, and, and keep these coming. Uh, if you've got an interesting experience that's it's a little different uh, and, and you can give us some insight from where you are and how you're dealing with it, send it to us. Feedback at dailytechnewsshow.com. Absolutely. And shout out to patrons at our master and grandmaster levels, including John Johnston, Chris Smith, and Jeff Wilkes. Uh, Len Peralta could not be with us uh, today. He apologized, but he did do art uh, to go along with today's show. And I have to say, it's one of his best yet. I'm really sorry he's not uh, here to receive the compliment uh, directly, but it's called Life Paused. It's a uh, phone screen with those words uh, on it. Life is paused uh, with the pause button. Uh, and uh, it just it really does kind of sum up how everybody's feeling uh, these days. So if you want to see that art, go to lemperaltastore.com and you can find it there. And uh, you can also buy it there. In fact, if you're a member of his Patreon at uh, patreon.com slash len, uh, you, you can actually get this already uh, or you can buy it. Uh, and it's it's worth getting and, and helping him out at lenperaltastore.com. Thanks to Rob Dunwood for being with us today. Rob, what's been going on in your world? I know you're a busy man. Um, we are back to regular uh, podcasting on the SMR podcast. We've had a full crew for the first time in nice. probably a couple of months. You know, had a couple of personal tragedies with uh, some of the hosts on the show. So uh, back to podcasting there. And uh, I'm just loving that I can do all this stuff from my house. And I only have <laughs> to wear a shirt that looks nice on the top. And I can be in sweats, <laughs> mismatched socks, and mismatched house shoes on the bottom. Ah, uh, yes. Uh, the, you've, you, you know the professional secret as we do. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> it's good stuff, man. Uh, thanks to everybody for supporting us. Uh, I, I feel incredibly lucky that I can continue to do this job uh, safely from home as I have for six years because you folks make it possible. Uh, and we know there's going to be some rough times for people and some people may not be able to support us, but if you can support us uh, and, and you are supporting us, we especially thank you now more than ever uh all of the folks who are giving anywhere from a dollar to to a lot more uh we really really appreciate every single one of you patreon.com slash dtns and we appreciate your feedback we want you to have a voice that's heard our email address is feedback at dailytechnewsshow.com if you can join us live that's monday through friday 4 30 p.m eastern 20 30 utc and find out more at dailytechnewsshow.com slash live back on monday talk to you then This show is part of the Frog Pants Network. Get more at frogpants.com. Diamond Club hopes you have enjoyed this program. <laughs>